Well, you see these price and line charts all the time, but the other uh, chart you see a lot of that you want to be comfortable with are candlestick charts and really understanding those. And we're going to take some time to really understand candlestick charts uh, because they give you a lot more information and can give you a little bit more insight into things too beyond just the basic price and line chart. So using them in conjunction uh, with a candlestick chart can be very, very effective. They're very, very common and they're actually very easy to use once you understand them. They may look a little confusing at first because uh, there's a little tricks to them a little bit, but uh, once you understand them, it'll, it'll make some sense to you. And the idea of why they're called candlestick charts, by the way, is they look like a candlestick, a wide body uh, or rectangular body, and you have a wick going up, and they actually, like burning the candle at both ends, if you're working hard, is an old expression, they actually have a wick going out the bottom too. And they look like a candlestick. So let's take a look at those. All right, I have two candlesticks here. Um, uh, one is green and one is red, uh, and the actual color represents something too as well. So first off, if you see a candlestick that's green, or it might be showing up as white, uh, depending on the exchange or what you're looking at, uh, but if it's green or white, that means that the closing price is higher than the opening. So if you see the rectangle where it's green in there, and you can see at the bottom where it says open, and then at the top is closed, that means that open price was at, let's say, X dollars or whatever fiat currency, you know, opening price ended up closing higher. Think of it like it started at the bottom of the rectangle and finished at the top of the rectangle. And the reason it's color coded is so you can easily at a glance see a bunch of candlesticks laid out all across maybe a chart, which we'll, we'll show an example in a second on that. So you can easily see our prices rising or falling. But green or white would say that the closing price at the end of the day is higher than the opening. The inverse of that is the red chart, or sometimes might show black depending on the exchange, where the closing price is lower than the opening price. So you can see here at the bottom uh, is the closing price, and at the top is the opening price at the, uh, on this red chart. So it opened at the top of the rectangle and closed at the bottom. Once again, if we have pricing here, you know, think of pricing on, this on the side here uh, on that uh, vertical axis, higher price would be higher, lower price would be lower, obviously. So in this case, if it's decreasing, it started open at, at the higher and then finished lower. All right, so that's the rectangle, the top and bottoms of the rectangle and the color of what the price is doing when it opens for the day in the market and when it closes for the day uh, or whatever time period of the market. Because you could be looking at, a let's say, a one hour interval and it would show it just for that one hour. Either way, it's an opening and closing. Uh, and the pricing depends on the color and the top or the bottom of the box. Now, the long lines at the top and the bottom are the range of pricing that's happening in that time period. So if the price is uh, at the top is the high and at the bottom of the range is the low. So if we were to look at, let's say, the green one again, um, uh, by the way, bullish, where it says bullish means it's just bulls and bears. Bull means it's rising, bear means it's falling. But when you look at the colors, you can tell you that too. And that's what you'll see. So if we look at, let's say, the green one as an example, we can see that it opened at the bottom of the rectangle. It closed at the, at the top of that rectangle was what it, it's, what it opening price and closing price was. But throughout that time period, and actually people were buying it higher than that close at the top of the wick, at the top line. And people were also buying and selling lower than the opening too in the whole trading range. So the range would be from one end of the wick to the other and the opening and the close is the body of the candlestick. Okay, it can seem a little confusing at first, but just kind of you can always review this part again to kind of you know get it. Now let's take a look at a bunch of them over a time period, because that's what you want to do with your candlesticks is see how are things changing over time. And the time period could be whatever you want to set it to be. Here's an example of a seven day time period. This real life example I pulled out. So each candlestick represents a day over these seven days. If I was to do a 24 hour time period and maybe each one was an hour, I would have 24 different candles, 24 hours in a day. But this example, we're doing a seven day period and each candlestick represents one day of trading. So what do you see out here? So what do you, are you starting to see any kind of patterns develop? Are you starting to see any certain colors or things coming on? Let's take a look at day one. What do you see for day one? I mean, you should see it's red. So it's red in color, so that would tell you that the price closed lower than it opened. Remember, red would be uh, closing with a lower close and green would be with a higher close from its opening. So it opened at the top of that red rectangle on day one and closed at the bottom of the rectangle. So we know it was a down day for that particular, let's say, currency, that cryptocurrency. 
Now, if we look at the wick on that D1, you can see at the top a very short wick, so it didn't have much upward mobility. It didn't have much higher prices than what it opened at. And if anything, it went down much further below from what it, what it closed at. So on this day, you could say it was very much a selling day. It was a sell-off type day. So that's day one. So now let's look at day two. Uh, you can see day two, it opened, at, it's a green, so it, it closed better than it opened. You can look at the bottom of the rectangle and see how it very much matches up with the bottom of the first day, the red rectangle, they opened at around the same or the same price that it closed at. It doesn't always have to be that way, but that's how it turns, may turn out typically. And you can see it was green and it went up a little bit and it closed up higher. And the wick was much longer on both the top and the bottom. <clears throat> but you see also that it wasn't as wide a range of like the red one as far as a wider range of trading within the day from the opening to the close. So that would be like a narrower trading range within the actual opening and close times. Day three, another big down day. Very little top wick at the top, closed way down and even went down further from that. Day four and five and six, you can see we're back to more green days. Uh, day six is interesting where it's very, very, very narrow from the opening close, not much change at all, though there was a wider range. And day seven, another down day. So you can kind of see there was a pattern here. We had kind of a downward trend, then a little upward trend, then kind of stabling off there, and then down again, um, or down and up and down. Now that might not tell you anything at this point, but it, this, but you can see how the pattern works and really want you to understand the candlestick. Let's look, to further kind of put this onto another chart and overlay this a little bit more information, let's look at this now over a 30 day period. So I took my seven day period, you can see in the blue box there where I highlighted my seven day period that we were just looking at and now put in the, into a wider 30 day type of sample. Now what do you see out there? Take a look at the overall 30 day period. How are prices changing? What's happening from the left at the beginning of time to the right to the end of time? Day one to day 30, these are individual day periods, there's 30 day periods. And if you were to look at that, what are you seeing? What types of, are you starting to see some patterns emerging? You're starting to see some things that might stand out to you beyond that seven day period? Well, you might be seeing, let's, uh, let's talk about a couple of things you might see. One, if you look to the left of our initial seven day period, you see all the green there. There's a little red in a couple days, but overall, the overall trend was green, where it was an upward rising trend there. So there's a lot of up days, a lot of days where the opening or where the closing was higher than the opening. Then we had our little seven day period where it was kind of sketchy up and down, up and down, but a little bit of a downward trend. And then after we get after our, after our seven day trend, we definitely are on a downward trend and have some really big down days. And then we have, a, you know, at the bottom, the, the real trough at the bottom of those big red and big green candlesticks uh, to the right there, we start to come back up and we get kind of, you know, up and down a little bit after that. Uh, you might also see where the volume spikes there on those big red and big camp and green days. There's a lot of trading going on because the pricing is really dropping and the price is really rising in that particular day. And you can tell that by the length of the body of the candle itself but also the length of its wicks too, if it's got long wicks and long bodies and a lot of trading over that means there's a lot of action happening in that period. So the more you can start seeing these charts and patterns, and we'll look at some details here in a bit in the next lessons, but you can start seeing where now you've got a story kind of being told, right? A fundamental analysis would be like, tell me the story about your business, how you're going to succeed, how are you making a difference in the market, how are you serving your customers? Charting and technical analysis is show me a pattern, show me a chart and tell me a story so I can make a decision based on that, that story, whether to buy or sell. So getting comfortable with pricing line charts and candlestick charts are real important because we're going to start seeing those when we start evaluating the patterns and, just, and you're going to start seeing some techniques like head and shoulders technique or the cup technique, different triangle techniques, different things that you can now look at these patterns and start seeing, ah, now I can make a decision based on this pattern.